And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Saltasaurus, which was a request from Cole via Patreon. So thanks, Cole. The name Saltasaurus means lizard from Salta, and it has nothing to do with salt. It was named <laughs> for the Salta province where it was found. It was a titanosaur that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Argentina. And it was excavated in 1975 to 77 by Jose Fernando Bonaparte, Martin Vince, and Juan C. Leal. And it was described in 1980 by Jose Bonaparte and Jaime Powell. The type species is Saltasaurus loricatus, and the species name means protected by small armored plates. The holotype is a sacrum connected to two ilia. There have been a couple species suggested to Saltasaurus, Robustus and Australis, but they're now considered to be another genus, Nucansaurus. More than 200 fossils have been found from at least two specimens of Saltosaurus, including teeth, vertebrae from the neck, back, hip, tail, parts of the shoulder and pelvis, and limb bones. Because of Saltosaurus, paleontologists have had to reconsider sauropods as having more defense than just being massive. So Saltosaurus was the first known sauropod to have osteoderms in its skin. Since then, it's been found in other titanosaurs, but it was the first. It had two types of osteoderms, large oval plates that were spiked and may have been in longitudinal rows along the back, and small rounded ossicles in between the plates, and these had denser bone tissues than the plates. That's cool. It's like an ankylosaur had a baby with a brontosaurus. <laughs> Something like that. So its armor probably protected it from predators, and they probably lived in herds to protect their juveniles. In the 1920s, Friedrich von Huhn had found armor plates in the same area and thought that they were Loricosaurus, which was an ankylosaur, but now they're considered to be Saltosaurus. Rodolfo A. Coria and Luis M. Chiappi said that they think the osteoderms didn't start developing until after Saltosaurus hatched, and this is based on embryos that were found. And this was in another formation in Patagonia, Argentina. Scientists have found a titanosaur nesting site where several hundred of them dug holes with their back feet and laid clutches, about 25 eggs each, and buried their nests. And these eggs were small, about 4 to 5 inches or 11 to 12 centimeters in diameter, and they had fossilized embryos with skin impressions showing bead-like scales with a similar armor pattern to Saltosaurus. I wonder why they thought that they dug with their hind feet. I couldn't find that. I guess it's the way it looks, huh. Doug, something. Interesting. Yeah. So Saltosaurus is considered to be small for a sauropod, though it was still quite large. It <laughs> was about 42 feet or 12.8 meters long and weighed 6.8 tons, though Powell estimated it to be about 20 feet or 6 meters long, and Gregory Paul has estimated it to be about 29 feet or 8.5 meters long and weighing 2.5 tons. It's quite a range. That is. It had a short neck and stubby limbs, short hands and feet, and a wide belly, which sounds kind of funny. It was shaped like a hippo, so Powell thought it might be aquatic. It had spongy tail vertebrae, air-filled holes covered those bones, which helped make it lighter, and it had cylindrical teeth. Like a good herbivore. Yeah, just thinking that, just like that article. <laughs> yep. So... Saltosaurus was a titanosaur, and titanosaurs are a group of sauropods, very large herbivores that lived during the last 30 million years of the Mesozoic era. Some titanosaur species are the largest land-living animals discovered, but in many cases, scientists have found incomplete fossils. The name titanosaur came from the titans of ancient Greek mythology, and their fossils have been found on all continents, including Antarctica, and the most titanosaurs lived in the southern continents, which was then part of the supercontinent Gondwana. Compared to other sauropods, titanosaurs had small heads that were also wide, with large nostrils and crests formed by nasal bones. Interesting. I don't think of sauropods as having particularly large heads, so those have had really small heads. Yeah. Well, at least small comparatively. I'm sure if you're face-to-face -face with a <laughs> titanosaur true. head, it would look large. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 